Eya yok satini çat da kat yuhan. Şiş uçin khasaki yayaki. Kliyat ke eya klas yak e khat utiyen. Klasate eya yiyin. Ökhatu ya. Tlakhunak e khat utiyen. Eya kliyasın de khak naski gi ewa. Qonaya ya at khuk watin. Providence, Rhode Island, are they? Shukwa ayi. Ya akhtuwa suku akh in aak hastu in khat u sati. Aja wei. Wei naski ki. Sitka san itkh. Qonne aya. Yen daqin. Wei atwa daqini yaak. Ya wasus latakh ani. Wal wasus latakh ani. Atwa daqini yaak. Yu duwa saako at. Ak kwan has to ani dach sit kade kle kak in ak Petersburg ka kichkan ak wrangle a ka kichkan ketchikan asya kach yikwati at kle dushu gal ak kanach a ka away wash siyal kone kle taku satan. อาจจะยังเนี่ยเคยเคยจะสังเกตอาจจะเคยจะสังเกตอาจจะเคยจะสังเกตอาจจะเคยจะสังเกตอาจจะเคยจะสังเกตอาจจะเคยจะสังเก
ya Alaska Airlines ya Wuhan e atla ati a hajiwu Seattle kayati e jide a chak kwasawu FedEx team ya Sunday at school ya kitlak da kunyu gi ya hastu in kakuni sekana na ya nechte kwaku nechte kwakotin kwas just a chas wu a nechli day asko ye kwati ya Sunday at school Nearly ye good quarty, her top. A dart you took the ton. Shkite ye kesati. Uke koa way brown university, you katangi. Hat koa, she cut koo, you katangi, dart you a quotan. Meshukwa koo, Haiti. Ya Sadu Sako at Creole languages, dart you a watan. Ka French, too. Kainah ka black ASL video saga at Tehasaku Kuz Tehasakun Kuz tea. A it a way Korean city, a dat yaksa, what accent teen away you hay watan. Wuke, a two wuke has to in hat was teen. A iti a yagi, kukde a ya, kukkotin. Tlidzi, tlach tlidzi, a tlain a ya. Ach tuwa sugu ko ach yedki ka ach shet ka ach keitli khusatini. Ka yuhans, ya, gulchi shakhi di sa aachi, ya gheyeti, ya yegi ko a ach atla adi yekhwadla. Fedex. Ya haji wua, na. Tlikudz yewe ya at kuwatini atla adi. Hekhwa sugu da sa awsatin, ya ach atla adi. A cuck guaniki jis ya yidat. Okay, let's walk through the whole thing. Uh, and then I'll, then we'll talk a little bit about your final assignments. Then we'll get back into the talk uh, story. And we'll, see, well, before we do that, we'll see if you folks have any questions. What did I just talk about? I heard you talking about, I heard you talking about time difference <laughs> and. You were tired and you had coffee. Yeah. Long journey over. Almost missed a flight. Weather delayed because it snowed in Seattle. I told me I was, I was not going to make my connection. I was freaking out because I, that was the only way I was going to get there, was making that one flight. I took the milk run. It's. <clears throat> Cow breast inside love flying around canoe. <laughs> <laughs> and so, because so then we stopped in uh, Sitka, which is where? Sitka, Sitka not, not oh. Sitka. Sitka, Petersburg. Then we stopped in Kitchhanaak. No? Wrangle. Wrangle. Then we stopped in Kitchhan. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I got it that time. And Kitchhan is a Tlingit name. I did have somebody say, you know what? We named that place. And they weren't Tlingit. I said, okay. So then at Kitchhan, that's where I had the weather delay. And then I made it. So then I got to, okay. Now I'm doing too much recapping. Then what else did I say? <laughs> did you just say that someone told you that, it, that, that Kitchhan was the name they gave it? Yeah, they said it was from a different language. Oh, Which isn't. Wow. <laughs> okay, okay, and then what else did I say? You said something about going, I think, from N gate to D gate? D gate to yeah, N gate. There you go. D gate, D gate to N gate. But I also said, I was trying to say, so at Wutakiniyak, the flying canoe, ah at Wukuhuya, the place where it drives around, which is I guess what you call like the tarmac. Is that what they call it? We just sat there for so long. Because we landed in Seattle, I was like, I'm gonna make it. I've got an hour. And then we just sat there forever. It's like, <laughs> 
Yeah, I think it's got three different names, and I'm going to suggest we use atbudqiniyak because I like it. And then kawayiktiyak would be a spaceship. Um, so then we pull up, and it's just driving so slow. It's like, how could you drive slow as an airplane? Can it go fast? And, and then we open the door, and I guess go running. And I went down. I got in the underground train. At at Taishtin Ka. And then I, I don't know, I forgot to say this part. Aqa away we end gate away at Hoshiki. We Kainak Alaska Airlines, Yejne, a good Kuu Dujit Eo de Tan, Kayeo Ka. Kayeha Koti get Jen Ka when it's <laughs> so when I got to the thing, oh, so I, I ran up to the gate and I saw the door was closed. I'm like, I'm done. I'm going to open that door. And then right when I came up, um, the gate agent was on the phone with someone. And then I heard them say, you want us to hold for 10 minutes because the Anchorage flight is late? And then they said, hush, which would be F-U-C-K in yeah. English. And they looked right at me like very angrily and mouthed it to me. I was like, whoa. And she said, just go over there. Whoa. But I got on the flight. <laughs> All this, it was so crazy. But I couldn't, I was, I was like, I'll just sleep to Boston. I couldn't sleep. I was just sitting, I was like working and watching movies. Like too, it was just too much. Did you have to switch trains? No, it was just one. It was just next stop too. It wasn't too bad. And uh, so then I got to Boston. Alaska What's that? Was one o'clock there? Kaidushu. Not Kaik, Kaidushu. Six. Yes. Six o'clock? Yes. Yako Adech Gaun, Tat Sit Gaun San, It Dach. Which put it at. 11 p.m. a lot of time. 2 a.m. 2 a.m. 2 a.m. <laughs> not good with time zones. I don't know. Really not good. So then I said, Dech gau tat sit gau san it dach. So sit gau san is noon. Sit gau san it dach is afternoon. So then you say, tat sit gau san, which is midnight. Tat sit gau san it dach after midnight. Right. So that puts it, that's where you, a way you could put it into the a.m. Adatawe you took with tunk. A tla a dear gay ya would laugh yak. You know what that is? A tla a dee. Baggage? Baggage. Did my baggage make it? Ah, train a tla a dee. Gone yende aya ya kanda guat. A hay quat like. So my bag didn't make it. Very confusing, the process. She's like, just write the number down on this piece of paper. And I was like, then I just leave it? And she's like, sure. I was like, it felt very weird. It's like, nobody assured me what was gonna happen. It was very, they were calling for help. It was very chaotic. And, um, and so I just caught the, they got, they sent a car for me. And I said, oh, I think it's called Jekhei. At Wudetokhu, at. We just named, I'll, I'll share a list with you folks if I can. Well, I'll do it anyways. I don't know if I can or not. But after your final, I'll share a list of a whole bunch of things we came up with new words for in the last few weeks. One of them is a taxi, which would be the thing that drives people around that you pay for. So, you can use um, that for like lift or stuff like that? Yeah, we'll work for that. We'll work for any of that. So. And then, uh, Took a nap, maybe five hours. Jumped up really fast. I was like, 
I gotta get clothes because I'm presenting at a university. So I, and then I thought, I need food and coffee. Got it? We need to get a day in Hakuhu. I was walking to get clothes, and Alaska Airlines called. So we got your bag. It's in Seattle. We're going to FedEx it to you. It'll be there by Saturday. I was like, I leave tomorrow. This is Thursday. I was like, I leave tomorrow. Just send it home. And they said, oh, it'll be at your house on Saturday. I was like, you're a liar. So, because I don't think you could FedEx from maybe overnight. I just don't understand how it all works. Anyways, I got home Friday night. And my bag got home today, just about an hour ago. I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought, I I So then I'm really curious, what did my bag see? Where did it go? Tell <laughs> me the stories. Okay, um, there's the recap. It was a fun trip. And so then I was just too tired to do class. I just couldn't do it. I was incredibly wiped out by 9.30 Eastern time after doing all of that stuff. So, uh, if you're traveling somewhere and you're presenting the next day, put the clothes you're going to wear into your backpack, into your baggage. That's my advice for everybody. Okay, so you all going to read letters one week from today. One week from today is our last class meeting. Make sure that you know, make sure that it won't be recorded. Don't, I don't want any pressure. This is just us sharing with each other. It is probably helpful for folks to have an opportunity to read what you write. But I leave that up to you if you want to share with folks. Um, but sometimes it gets pretty personal. Like I've seen people write letters to ancestors. I've seen people write letters to future generations. And sometimes people get emotional. And whenever you share content, that's sort of like linked to your performance in the class. Like, I'm not going to record that. So it's just going to live in the moment. Um, one week from today is our last class. And then we're on break. So we'll also be talking today and Thursday about things you can do to keep the language around you. That's going to be your mission for that month in between classes is to take a break, sure, but don't don't walk away from the language. Don't leave it behind. Lots of options, lots of ways to keep it around you. Uh, we're also continuing to explore ideas with study groups and stuff. I will finally send the base camp stuff. It's not, I'm not just lying about that. I'm just uh, waiting for the right moment. So, uh, but I'll send that out. And then there's um, there will probably be some other opportunities. Outer Coast might do a MOOC. Clink uh, and Haida is doing a class, I think that's Monday and Wednesday, perhaps, I forget. Uh, Hatuch Lachish funds a class, that's Friday mornings. Um, we do have a link, which I should have been more upfront about. It's been a very strange semester. But we do have a Zoom link that's just open all the time for folks to meet and study, converse, do whatever. So we're probably going to hopefully over the break, coordinate with someone to help us run that and just set up time. So there's study groups that, that meet, and we can use the base camp also to sort of coordinate some of that stuff. And it's just an open Zoom link. Because what we found, especially during the pandemic, is people wanted to have other people to talk to and to study with. And then those study groups really they seem to move faster than the rest of the class because they were just working on stuff all the time. So it really helps to have people to talk to and visit with as you continue to absorb more and get. But that's the only thing you have to do is just read this letter. That's all you got to do. It should be about one page long. Um, try not to use like 48 point font or anything. Don't be tricky, just single space, one page. Whatever is from your heart. Uh, it could be stuff that you looked up a lot of the language because you just needed to see how to say that. You can ask me questions between now and next week. I'll do my best to be re quick and responsive. Uh, I'm happy to review stuff and give you feedback. But also, it's a no-pressure situation. It's not like, that was a C-plus 
letter. It's like everybody just does the thing, right? Any questions or anything about any of that? Is there, where do, is there like a way to say like dear and then like someone? Like, can we start the letter? If it's a kinship term, it's already built in there. Um, but otherwise, I think the kinship term is probably the most endearing things that we have. So like, for example, if you're writing to a grandparent, you would start with kishk. Um, but as far as like, dear so-and-so, um, I would probably say their name and then some sort of kinship term. That would seem like the way to do it. And then um, there's another one, which is, uh, let me put it on the screen so you folks can see it. Is this going to be in the part of the notes for today? Uh, yeah, I could put it in there. Thank you. Has anybody heard this term? You'll hear it at a pu'ik. So they'll say someone's name. Well, let me, let me try to find it. I can't. Okay. Hmm. Okay, well, it's right here. So let's say, like, for example, if we we're at uh, an eagle party, say, let's say it's Wushkita, because we're near their land right now. And Yechiyadi was there as one of their honored guests. And I brought out the fruit dish. Like, I don't know if you folks have ever seen this. It would be a big dish, it would be a big bowl full of fruits that have a hard skin, like oranges and apples and bananas. And what's going to happen is I'm going to say something, and then whoever's name I call would say, Ha Day. And then someone, there'd be a runner who starts bringing this bowl over, and everybody around them starts pounding on the tables and getting really excited. And as soon as they put the bowl down, everybody tries to grab as much fruit out as they can. Has anybody seen this? Mm -hmm. Anybody know what the phrase is that you would say? As, as, the, as the person announcing the fruit, you mean? Mm-hmm. Not the rhythm of it. That's very close. That's very close. So let me, let me type it, and then, um, then I'll talk about what it says. So, and these are specific phrases for pu'ik. There's a whole set of them, uh, and this is an important one. So what I would say is I would say their name. In this case, I'll use the Now There's one word that comes after this, which is k'ayide. Everybody say k'ayide. 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 You know, three things. There's a, there's a body part now, and then there's two of these directional types of things. So let me show you what, oops, hold on. You know how to spell and think it, you wish you did. Uh, oh, what are the three parts, anybody know? I forget. Well, no, just tell me like, in the thing, just say and think it what they are. Ha. Huh. Yes. So there are, with yi, there are two of them. The yi that's inside of a house would usually be its own word. It wouldn't usually be attached to something. Um, so there is a second yi. What is the second yi? The second yi. You like you all? Or well, there's like ye, I. There, okay, there's a third ye. Should be. Under. Say it again. Under, underneath. Well, so ta ye is underneath. So ta ye is underneath. And ye, we'll, we'll put these things in front of it, is below. <laughs> ye. Below. Ta ye day. 
So how does that work now? Towards the mouth. You mean just to present it here? Is that like that? Yeah. yeah, so chayide is, it's, it's a metaphor. It's kind of a metaphorical thing. It would be like, put it down there so they can eat it. Okay. Oh. Right? So yeah, it's like, put it on the table right below them. Oh door. yeah, okay. So that's right. Do. Hua hu. Tin. Or teen. So this is the phrase. If you ever end up being a nakani, which means you're the person who helps facilitate the kui. It's a, it's a big job, and there's specific phrases you have to know, and this is one of them. So then I'd be on the microphone, I'd say, Yes, get the to Hokutin. And then he'd say, Hade! And then we'd run it over there, right? So this part, do Hokutin. I'll, I'll make it long. I don't understand tin and teen. I think they could be short. Long, high, low, doesn't matter. <laughs> Heard them all, all ways. I, don't, I really don't think it matters. Just kind of whatever flows better. Right. Huh? Just it's whatever feels right. I don't know. And some, some speakers, they'll correct me too. I'm like, okay. And then someone else will say it the other way. So I just think it's one of those ones that's just flexible. Okay. So on its own, you have du huayi. Right? So you could say ach huayi. That's something that you could say if you're looking for. Um, so this would be duhuai, so you change that to ach. On its own, well, duhua, when you say duhuahu, I really liked how Nora translated this one. It should say their gang, whoever they run around with, right? That's, those are your partners. Like, you know, like in Hawaii, they would say, um, you know, George guys? And that means George and the people who hang out with. George, right? So it's like whoever your pack is, that's your huahu. And so that's why they say that, because there's people sitting around you, and those are the ones who are going to get the fruit as well. So you'd say de du huahu teen. So this is a plural huahu, and then the singular is huayi. That means on its own, do I have that on? I guess it's a sidekick. I don't know. I don't know how to translate it. And in the dictionary, it says it's a male term, but I don't think it really is. I, I think it's not a gendered term. Would it, would it make a difference if the person was alive or not? If the person was alive or not? It depends on how you feel about it. Because, like, and this is a really good question, right? So there was a wonderful speaker named Jukatin, Jane Smarch. And she used to say, this. Ach ish yi. What is that? Under those under my dad. This this yi yi is a different oh. one. <laughs> so, for example, people could have this, and I'll put two versions on here. And I don't want to make jokes about it because it can be very serious. But you have suck and yi yi. These are opposite terms. So you could say ach huch suck, ach huch yi yi, ach shet suck, ach shet yi yi. What do you think we got? Future spouse and former spouse. Yes, yes. So you have to be and former. This one is really interesting. Like if if you just watch how Tlingit, like the farther we get into Tlingit language, the more we see like the Tlingit way of thinking. Tlingit tundetani. 
there's a whole bunch of stories. Like there's there are stories. They're very sensitive, but there are stories about how people become an ikht, a medicine person, and those are usually called ikht saku. They're going. They're going to be a medicine person. Then they'll sometimes say, like, the thing that's going to become our food. And then there's uh, sometimes collectively, the whole group of raven stories is called the raven to be. So this is how you'd say, like, a fiance, right? Like, we're going to get, they're, they're going to become my husband or my wife. Then yi yi is former. That means like it's over, right? And so, but when she would use, she would use this term, achish yi yi. And I, as far as I can remember, that's the only speaker I know who did that to say hey, the one who used to be my father, which is communicating that he's gone. But you could still use that kinship term. They would still be your father, like I do it. Like, they're gone. But I still talk about them like that. And so that's a lot of those things are personal decisions, like how you talk about, you know, and some of them are like, do you consider a dog a person? I probably do. And then do you talk about your deceased relatives as if they're still here? Sometimes I do. If I want to communicate that they're gone, then I would. Because sometimes it's important for people to know. Like, you know, I could say, my grandfather, who's not alive, right? You could say, So my grandfather, oh wait. What did I just say? My grandpa's name. What's the Yudisagan part? Right? What's his name? Is that right? right? It used to be called, right? So that signals that he's gone, right? So that's, it's, that, and what we have, and this is something that I think is really common for folks to, so you've got you you do a sock, and then you have you do sagan. So it, that part has to change. A lot of people will say you do was sagan, but it should be do sagan, right? And so let's let's take a quick look at why. So here we have uh, when we pull this thing apart, we have zero, du, ya, sak. And this verb root was sa, which means to to name something or to call it out. It also means to breathe or to rest. It's a very interesting verb root. But that KW just gets locked on there now. And then here you get zero to zero sock. So going through, right, as we continue to think about pulling things apart, so we put them back together. I really like to look at Schlingit like this because. My dad used to bring home like telephones and alarm clocks and stuff, and he'd say, "Take it apart, put it back together, and see if you can make it work." And so that was like sort of like a that was a way I grew up and learned how to sort of tinker with things. So as we pull thing it apart, the idea is to sort of see all the moving parts that are in there and then snap it back together. So what are these things here? We've got, I guess, the thing to do is maybe to go this and then what do we got there's four things here right each of them serve a purpose there's the verb root right 
verb root. So to uh, to name or to call out. Does the wall make it imperfective? Close. So what this so this is the classifier. So this classifier right here can be one of two things. It could be zero or it could be yeah. And so thinking about the classifier, I would say the default state is zero. You turn it to ya. Yeah. Why? Why would you do that? There's only two reasons. If the verb has happened, then it goes what we call plus i. That letter i pops up in the classifier to say, yes, it happened. Doesn't matter about time. Time does not matter. It just says, yeah, it happened. Yeah, it did. That's what, that's what the classifier does. Like It just lets you know that. The only other thing that would cause it to go plus i, which is weird, is to say it potentially could happen. So that part doesn't really make sense, but don't, potentials are very big, beastly things. I'll show you what, what it looks like in a second. Okay, so this is the classifier. So this says, uh, so now we got the classifier. And so sometimes we're going to start learning this little secret code. This is your decoder ring. I'm going to start working on your decoder ring. And uh, <laughs> to sidetrack, I've got this little beautiful ceramic uh, like a little teeny basket. It looks like it's like a beautiful antique. My great grandmother got it from a box of Cracker Jacks. And I was like, if you get a prize from Cracker Jacks now, it's like a little piece of plastic you put on your palm and then it just curls up and they throw it in the garbage. <laughs> it's like, they used to have real prizes. Okay. So the way we talk about this is we put the letter CL just to say there's the classifier. Then the, there's a period. So the way that this whole thing works is the separate things are, these things are separated by a hyphen. So if you see a hyphen, you'll say that's one thing in between that hyphen. So sometimes we'll use a period to say this is still that same thing. You just got to put a little bit of separation between these. We'll do parentheses and we'll say this is a zero classifier. Okay, so the first thing is the group, zero. What are the four classifier groups? Anybody know? Zero. Zero. Nah. Right? Nah. Those are <laughs> conjugation types. Oh. Very good, though. Very good. There's zero. There's uh, S, D, and L. L. Uh, zero. Zero, S, L. <laughs> no. <laughs> Visualize it. I'm not remembering. I know. I'm trying to. It's the librarian's favorite classifier. S H, right? Right. Okay. Okay. So, in here, when we note the classifier, in the middle, we put what the group is. On the left. Like if this classifier, uh, like for example, let me try and, and think. Um, I'll say, kuch would degut, right? So kuch would degut means they came back, right? Like the Terminator, right? Kuch de kuch what degut. So here, if you were to note this one, so you would just looking at the verb, you would go this and then this and then this. So you would say this is the perfective marker and then you would have classifier and this would still be zero but right before it you would put the letter D. See there's the D part in the classifier has been activated which we'll talk about. And then we'll say comma, 
i. So this is a, a whole, this is your third language that you're going to learn, which is linguistics. Just like we got to code this stuff so you could see how it works. And then like eventually you won't really need that third language. It will go away. For some people, they really love the grammar and the linguistic side of it, and they'll always mess around with that stuff. For a lot of other people, it's just to help you. It's your bridge language between the two. Because Tlingit works in such different ways than English, it's helpful to have that. So here we would say zero. There's no D, but it is plus I. It's a plus I classifier because it happened. Kuch would do good. They came back. Do a sock. That's what they're called. Okay, we only got two more things left in this verb. Zero and two. What are they? Is it cheating if I just say it's a zero classifier? Uh, it's not cheating, but it's also not quite. <laughs> <laughs> it is a zero. But so what's going to be just to the left of the classifier, right? Okay, now let's take let's go back to this other thing we we're looking at the other day. And this will help. And it's okay because we haven't we haven't really done this stuff a whole lot. Right? So this is this is us like looking ahead. What are we gonna be in for next semester? An awful lot of this. Once you figure out how the language works, it opens it up. You've got to understand the mechanics, and it's it's a little bit tricky, but it opens up everything. So you have object, thematic, conjugation, subject, classifier, stem, and then a suffix. It will always go in that order. It must go in that order. So when you see d right before, just to the left of the classifier, that is the subject. So if that's the subject, Who is du? You. Not you. Them. Is it people? People. Keep going. Like, this is how you get it. This is how you get it, right? Those are all great guesses, man. <laughs> so a lot of times Object. we'll code this as we'll say someone. And then we go period, parentheses, fourth person, human. <laughs> Because there, there is a fourth person non-human, not as a subject, though. Okay. So Tlingit does have a fourth person. So does English. It's not a big deal. What do you mean? English, English can communicate a fourth person with the absence of a subject. Right? For example, we all come here and we see there's a plate of brownies. Everyone's excited. They're going to have brownies. We take a break. Everybody comes back. There's just crumbs. <laughs> Someone says, what, what happened to the brownies? And I said, they were eaten. That's the fourth person. Okay. Right? Mm. Kids use them all the time, right? Okay. What happened? It broke, right? Okay. So you can you could talk about it, and but Tlingit has a pronoun for that. It's a duacha. Somebody, somebody ate them. And then I got crumbs all over my face, right? <laughs> so the fourth person in Tlingit means it happens. It usually means it happens or people do it. Those are the two ways you're usually going to translate that. Some people like to use they, but I think that creates confusion. So I don't use they. I use they for a third person all the time. Right? And then I'll use they all for a third person plural. So someone does it. And we got one thing left. Object. The object. <laughs> them. So this is them, period third person object. So it does start to get long, right? Oops. So it does start to get long. But one of the things that we do by looking at this is we say, okay, well, if we have you do sagen, oops, and we just drop it right here, we can copy this whole thing and paste it. And I should change. Let me change this so it doesn't drop a line. So now we say, okay, well, it's still, let me get that out of the way, it's still them, third person, oops, 
object. Object. Make it smaller. It's still someone, but this plus i goes away. Switches back to the zero. Because even though it did happen, it's not happening now. Right? So I guess the classifier going plus i is really saying, like, is that way kind of, it's up about like sort of like the state of it right now, kind of. So if we say used to be called, but not anymore, that pushes it back to a zero. And then here we get what we call the decessive, which means used to, but not anymore. Okay, so the, and there's different ways you could use this one. Like you could say, I used to know it, but I don't. You could also say, I used to not know it, but I do. <laughs> okay. I used to not know it. <laughs> but the other way to say that in English is I didn't know that. But in Tlingit, you would to say I didn't know that, you would also be saying, but now I do. Any question? That's a lot. That was a lot. Why did I talk about? Oh, the song coming back to the kitchen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Have fun. Okay. But, like, so this stuff, you know, so you'd say, Achlilk, Gushtehin, you do sake. Hu owe kone ach e outletu slinget, shukwa aye. Hu owe, it was him. Kone ach e outletu slinget. He started to teach me Klingit. He was the first one to do it. Um, okay. We should probably take our break and then go back. We're going to Takha, but before we go into Takha, think about any questions you might have, getting your letter ready, general language questions. Uh, so come back at. Uh, Whatever time zone you're at, 35 minutes after, six minutes from now. <laughs> okay, we're back. We're trying to solve a, a dilemma that emerged on the break, which, what could we possibly call a hamster, a gerbil? But this is going to open the... The whole rodent cage is going to open because then we have to name the guinea pig and the <laughs> chinchilla and the, all of them. Yeah, I kind of agree with what was said earlier that the one with the without a tail, or the one that's rat-like, would be a guinea pig. They're all right because they're about the same size. Okay, so the first step to solving this puzzle potentially, we'll have to also take it to an elder and see what see what they think. There's two ways to say tail. Chidi, kuu. What type of tails are those? Ones that wag. Yes. Or ones that swim. And ones that are not swimming. <laughs> That's pretty close. That's pretty. I guess because they. I guess every tail can kind of move, right? I, so I guess maybe. Wag. Okay, we'll entertain a different. Not short or long. Tapers? Tapers. Kinda, I think. Just make it. <laughs> God. So I guess it comes down to wide and flat or not. I think that's what it comes down to. So kuwu would be wide and flat. So what would have kuwu? C-A-D. Beaver. Yeah, it's Katie. Yeah. Cheech, I think, would. Keith, I think I heard. That, that should. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Nope. They don't have a... It's not a... You know. 
because it's fluffy, but it's still, it's a little, it's a chibi. Oh, it is, huh? Okay. I have a little more joy in it. Fish? Yeah, he's got a fish. What about a bird? Who? Okay. Right, because it's wide and flat, even though it's going this way. Yeah. It's not a, it's not a little finger-like tail which would include little fluffy bunny tails and deer tails. Because uh, Hawaii Nuck Richard Downhauer really got a kick out of translating things like Goldilocks and uh, all these kind of classic fairy tales, whatever you call them. And one of them was Peter Cottontail. And so he kept saying, Peter Cotton Koo. And the elders were laughing so hard. And he's like, um, Killing it with this story. <laughs> it's just because in their brain they saw a rabbit with a fishtail. And they just thought it was hilarious. So, so the first thing is these things would have KD. So now there's a couple of things you could do. Like, so you could say, oh, I don't even know how you'd spell this. Shush. I guess you gotta use this. KD. Right? Because anybody. Let's take a look at this word. We're going to close the semester by just going all over the place. Okay. What is kshini? It's a vest. Oh. This comes from a verb. Okay, so now we're back to the classifier. All roads back, all roads lead back to the classifier. So now we get we gotta look at a chart. Hold on, we gotta look at a picture. This is it's all because of that hamster. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Let me find. This is a presentation that we're gonna do pretty soon. Uh, we might have to wait until next semester. This is we're just gonna get into this verb. We're gonna spend all semester mastering the thing at verb. Then we're gonna spend next year half the time in conversation, half the time doing grammar and translation work. That's, that's the pathway for Schengen, right? <laughs> sort of looking at this classifier chart. There's four groups, 0, S, L, S, H. Those are the four. It's always those four. It cannot, a verb cannot switch groups because it will become a different verb. If it changes the classifier group, that's a different verb. That's how Schlingit makes verbs. And sometimes it says, okay, well, the reason it might do this is because we might have questions of what we call agency, right? So you could say, khatin, kate khatin, I see a dog. That's a zero classifier. All I'm telling you is, I see a dog. I'm not giving you any more information than that. If my dog is lost and I'm looking for it, I might say, Ach, Kately, Chwasetin. I see a specific dog. That's why you say, Yak, E, Chwasetini, because you're a specific thing. You are you. If I see you, that's a specific thing. So sometimes the classifier will switch to an S group to classify things. That's why it's called a classifier. I drug it. Chwasachut, I drug it by a handle. Sometimes it'll switch to an L classifier to say it has one of those things. Right? And so let's take a look at an example. Uh, so we know what Shishjini uh, is. Do we know what this is? This is a good wintertime noun. Sock. Loves. Loves. I think sock is a mitten. And sock is a glove. Oops, hold on, I missed a letter. And what just happened? Close. 
Is that the classifier? Li? There's a classifier. And like if we if we kind of pull this thing apart, we'd have ch. And what's ek? Finger. Or an octopus tentacle. Fingered mitten. Okay. Mitten that has fingers. Yeah. Okay. We can look at another example, right? What is this? Well, it's a thumb or a dorsal fin, right? So somebody built a house and they put a big dorsal fin on the top of it and they call it Shigushi Hit. You have this thing, which has to do with a sense of space. Goose. The weather has clouds. Right? So the L classifier, not every time, but sometimes we'll say it has one of those things. So if it has one of those things, you could also say Klesh Ginny. It doesn't have arms. Oh. Contract. So I think you could say It doesn't have a tail. That's brilliant. If you wanted to say like it normally does, but this one doesn't. We're going down the hamster hole. I don't know what we call it. <laughs> Little tunnel. Okay. Any other language thoughts or questions? We had a whole bunch of, that was like a lot of grammar right there, just to start to show you how this stuff works. I don't remember which one that stands up and you look at its shadow. One's that for three. Oh. Ah. Right, is he a marmot? Oh. What is that thing? Groundhog. Ground, what is? Yeah. But it, groundhog and marmots are like a gopher or a. They're related, and it's the same animal. Because mm -hmm. we don't have those here. We have tsach, which is a marmot. And then we have tsalk, which is a ground squirrel. Okay. You could always call, I guess, uh, the guinea pig like uh, the one that gets experimented on. Or, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> something like that. Just forget the tail. Just, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now we got to get back to our story. I don't know what we're going to call them. Okay, we potentially got names for them. Um, the guinea pig and, or wait, the hamster and the gerbil. Kutsinuwa. And then yekuwa chikidi. We always call it short tail. I don't know. Okay. So here's where we left off on our story. Like he's, Klingit stories usually have a frame, right? And oftentimes, like, if we really analyze this story, this frame is like my namesake, and I had these boats, and my kids wrecked it. And he does a lot to just sort of start this. It has nothing really to do with the cannibal. But it starts to, and then all of a sudden he switches. Then when he comes out of the story, he says, this is why things are that way. It's a very common framework for Klingit. But usually, with the beginning, what he's doing is saying, this is why I could tell you this story. Keith Wayne called me over, explained my name to me. And then there's, with Klinget, I guess this is my interaction that summarizes how a lot of this stuff works. There's a whole ton of cultural information that exists behind the scenes. His name is Shah Dagh. That's one of the oldest Klinget villages that's probably the place where people lived where this story happened. But he doesn't tell you all of that because I think he assumes you might know it. My example is this. There's a story called The One-Horned Goat, which is a story about this young man who becomes a medicine person. It's a very powerful story. And in the version that we have recorded and written down, they don't talk about the one-horned goat at all. It's in, the, it's in the story, like he sees a, a mountain goat with only one horn, I think. But we asked Nora, we're like, why is this story called the one-horned goat? And she said, because of the one-horned goat. And so we're like, 
got it. You know, but it's like we're supposed to kind of just know this information. Right? And so a lot of times speakers will present stuff like that, but then that you've got to, you know, and that's what we're here for is doing the work to help fill in those blanks. So he's talking, so at this point he says, my name is Shah Dog. Um, we'll just sort of walk through these lines, right? So he says, uh, in this boat called, that used to be called Guide, which lets you know the boat doesn't exist anymore. Um, I am called, my name is Shah Dog, or I used to always go around seining in this boat. My name is Shah Dog. Uh, through my name, this person named Geet Wayne called me over. There was a person who lived long time ago, they died long time ago. Okay, so that gets us to here. So oh, let me make sure I shared my sound. It didn't. Okay, so again, we'll listen to it. One person reads it, then we start to translate. read that? Okay. And what is it saying? Any parts that we recognize? Is there winter? Not winter. Yes. But like technically, I am a young man, right? And so pay attention to this stuff when you look at stories, mm -hmm. when they're moving between what we call a perfective verb, which means you're just saying, did it happen or didn't, didn't it happen? So I think it doesn't change verbs for time, which is always really interesting. But you'd usually say, yes, you duck hut. And there's different ways you could say it. Like this technically says, I am a young man. You could say, I became a young man. And you could also say, I used to be a young man. So it kind of depends on what you're sort of communicating here. But when we pull this thing apart, we have yis, which is new. This is an adjective. Yiduk is a Yaduk and shot are not adolescents. They are young adults who have already gone through puberty but are not fully grown. That's basically what yaduk and shot means. And if we go back a long time ago in Shlingit, just like every culture around the world probably, that's when they were getting married. Because people didn't live, people just got married sooner and started having kids sooner the farther back you go. So that's why you'd say, ah, yadakku for my boyfriend, and ah, shatki for my girlfriend. And then you get chatsati, so there's the object, and then this is the S classifier, right? So look at that classifier. Yati is the zero classifier for this verb, for this verb root, it means to be. Siti means to be one of those. Right? So we see how it classifies. Whatever gets this underline X, that's what it is. I'm a teacher. I'm right? Haida. Ask questions if you got them. So just keep going. So I'm sorry, but that like underline X, you're just saying that that's all related then to the city. Yeah, so this, there are some verbs that use this underline X to say, it's one of those things. And it, it, the thing needs to pop up right before the verb. But then you could substitute things for that right there. And it could be a profession. It could be an ethnicity. It could be your clan identity. It could be um, now it's a tech city. They're an alcoholic. Right? It could be sort of a they're a liar. So it could be like you're, you're putting them into a category is what you're doing with this verb. A Knuti number. Yeah, right? Okay, right. And then that then they would be paired up in an S classifier. Yes, the city means to be one of these things. Okay? 
The recap starts where we already did. Someone read that? Any of us here? And anything that we recognize. Sina uh, could mean light or gas. Yes. Usually light. And so this is one where you get a compound. When you say light boat, what do you think you get? The motor boat I have. Yep. What? A motor I did have. Yes. So this this is the perfective form. So we say yati, wuti, right? So just asking wasa iyati, how are you? You can also ask how is it, right? You call someone, and they're at. Uh, they're at some sort of social gathering. They're at the Christmas party. Mm -hmm. Christmas party. Wasayati. How is it? If it already happened, wasawuti. How was it? Right? So this is how Shingit moves things around and takes care of. Sometimes it talks about time. Okay. So then, yeah, Achji Yeyati. Is I, it's in my possession. Achiyewuti was in my possession. So in this case, you go down the bottom. I had a gas powered boat. What about the top part? I'll give you these ones. You often see these ones as chute instead of chute. Um, there, it usually is in the up reverse order. Keep an eye out for this little word, kla. What it means is then or at that time. Sometimes it pops up multiple times within the same sentence. Chukla usually means just at that time or just then. So then we got to go back to this one. I'm a young man. Uh -huh. So then he, that's why he, sw he says it in that imperfective. I am a young man. Okay. Just then, from the time, and so, oh. So this, we did this dach and day, uh, going towards is day, away from is dach. Those can also work for time. Time and space are the same thing in Tlingit. So now you can have this verb, which is actually making a noun out of the verb and then adding duh to it. From the time I was a young man, I had a gas powered boat. Oh. Here's it, here it is all not fully pulled apart, but starting to do that, right? So Here's that underline X, right? Chet sati yidach. Tsinayak achji yibuti. So these directional things that we were looking at, dach, de, g, a whole bunch of these things are green. So they're green in this thing just so we can start to see them, see how they interact. Okay. I had 1906 model. What is this now? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. 
Anything we recognize. A steaming. Uh, Na. Um, it's not the classifier. It's the conjugation, right? And then the S is the um, classifier. Yeah, so the ya and the na. And sometimes it's going to be yay, sometimes it's going to be k. We'll get to that. But it's very often ya na means it's in the process of happening, right? So you say ya na gut, ya na queen. Um, you have these different ones, ya anas queen, right? And so that ends up, if the verb root is open and you do, use one of these ya na things, it must close. It will close with the letter N. So if you took away na and the N at the end, even though you can't really see it there, you still have city. Same verb to be one of those things. But in this case, and this is a, you don't usually hear people say ya nastin. But ya nastin means it's in the process of becoming it. It's a very advanced thing. You don't hear people say that. Like if like, I guess, people who are going through like our language teacher program, you could say They're in the process of becoming a teacher right now. And then there's that tle again. Then, and we got an English word here, but shugunach. Anybody know that one? The original or the first? Original. Yeah. At that time, they're in the process of just coming out. All right. So this, this is also, I'm going to jump back a few slides here. We were talking about this on the break. He's born in 1893. And he's a young man. That's that's the early 1900s, right? Right. So then he, that's what he's talking about. He's like, I always had these gas-powered boats. When I was a young man, they were just coming out. And so that's why these stories are so cool, too, because we're like, we are, it's a window into the 1900s in Southeast Alaska. Yeah, Dene, what's that? Ah. So what is shukhanach versus shuganach? So um, let me type that one here. Let's see. Got the end of the Sunday. Ah. Okay. So shukhanach. Oops. So shukhanach would be first, and that's an order of events, right? So for example, I might say, So first of all, they went home, then they went to the store. So this is saying like, which one happened first? Shukunach would be, the origin, the original, the first one. So, for example, I could say, um, whatever the thing is. You were the first one to become that thing. But if I said, it means you first. So, this one is more of like the first in the order of events, and this one is the original. The first one, like so. If, for example, you say, "Oh, kashuk at at the original electric car." So now, now I'm talking about like the very first electric car, whereas like shukwanach would be like this thing before that thing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
kunas chish. Crazy question, but you know, like in in some cultures, you know, you hear people's names sometimes being first and second, and oh yeah. So like, so here's what do you think this would be then? Ach, shukwa yeti. First son, the first child. So this, if you're shukwa yeti, you get to be a boss. You get to tell those other siblings what to do. But in Tlingit culture, mm -hmm. you are also the one who gets in big trouble if those younger siblings are acting up. Because you're expected to keep them alive. So shukwa, so then we see that, like the first child. But it's in that order of events, right? There was this one, then the other ones, and the other ones. Because if you said shugunach yeti, that would be like the first human being child. Like it would just be like way back to the origin. Okay. Okay. Somebody read that? Hello? <laughs> we have a process. <laughs> You know, so when I look, one of the first classes I taught at college was Intro to Academic Writing. And um, my teacher was Sarah Deutschman, and she taught us how to teach academic writing. And she was talking about what they call free writing, right? Where sometimes when the class starts, you'd say, everybody take out a piece of paper and just write for five minutes. Write about whatever you want. Just practice the act of writing. So they were doing that, and then she looked around, and she saw someone they didn't have a pen or pencil, and maybe were too embarrassed or something to ask for it, so they were just pretending to write. And I was like, silly. So, somebody read this out loud. Ah, where, where, dech ach jik city, where yak tlenk. Sheesh. And this, he uses city here, and most speakers would use yati. So you can. So if you're thinking of how the language is going to work here, it would be way more common to say Dech achjik yeti we yaktank. But maybe there's something to it. Like he's he's a master speaker, so it, at any given time he could have been doing something that nobody else understands how to do, or very few people. So what do you think this is saying? First of all, let me do something here. I don't know if we've done this yet. Oh, I guess we don't do this. What are, what are these four things doing right here? What do we got? Boat or canoe? Boat or canoe. It's about size. It is. But what about yakuk? Your little one. Yeah, small boat. That would be yakuk. <laughs> That's good. We're remembering this time, right? Excellent. Yakuk. <laughs> Yakuk. Right, so we got, we'll use canoe. We say canoe. Yeah. Little canoe. Yakuk. Heavy? I'm just, just guessing now. Is it that canoe? Like canoes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, clean. Big canoe. And yeah, Oh my gosh. This is how we hadn't done this one yet. This is how you do big plurals. Ah. 
no plurals, you go, because you could also do that, right? Yaukisan. Now we're ready. We can have all kinds of boat squads. <laughs> boat, little boat, big boat, big boats, little boats, right? All of them, right? This, this, you're going to see these. You'll see them around, right? Mm -hmm. So clank is how you do uh, big plurals. And so let me copy this to our class notes so that you folks will have them. Um, and I'm going to delete it from here, OK? But don't worry, I put the notes up. Don't forget. But clank is how you do that. Ech, ach, jig, siti, we yak, tank. Oh, it is siti. Hold on. This is a different siti. Okay, all right. Okay. I have two yes. of those big bugs? Yes. Yes. Okay. So it took me a second to remember this. Okay. So you have yati, right? And yati is to be. But there's a whole separate verb root that is a, also t, but that's why we have the little number one by it and the little number two. So the little number two is a handling verb. Ah, ji te, we te, give me that rock, put it in my hand. Ah, ji awa ti, we te, they gave me that rock. Ah, ji sa te, hand me the complex object. <laughs> There's moving parts inside of it. it uh, you just have to carry it a certain way. So having a boat in this case is city. It was in my possession and it's a complex object. It likes to take the long way to say these things. I have but it's actually, I have, I have these two big boats. Okay. We haven't gotten to a single cannibal yet. Yahuchi aye awe a heat jeet chositi. Sheesh. Same city verb. So what do we got? The last one? The last one. Huchi aye is the last one. I gave it to my youngest son. I gave it to my son. Awesome. My son. That would it would say. That's awesome. <laughs> that brings up a good like we did shukwa yadi. Oh, I don't think I put that in my notes. Hold on. Okay, let me go back to the notes because then I won't forget to copy and paste. Okay. So we did all these. So if we get shukwa yadi, that's. Uh, oops, let me put ach in there. My first So I'm gonna show you something else you could do. Ach Hunhu Eat Ach Ki Yeet Ach Shatri Seek Kiki seek. I probably kept these on there too. What are those saying? A hunchuit, a kiki yeet, a shetri seek, a kiki seek. Oh, this is kinship too this is a high level kinship stuff. What 
Hunt's Hunt. Older brother. It's a male Older. brother. So what do you think a chunchlik would be? My older brother's child? Not quite. Youngest child? Not quite, but that's very close. But hunch is what? A male's older brother. So a hunch my oldest son. A kick yeet, my youngest son. Middle child is no special term, sorry. Well, not older, no, this is. The ach is right there. It's like my. My oldest son, my youngest son, my oldest daughter, my youngest daughter. Okay. So in this case, the shetch and the kik is talking about where they are in the pecking order of those children. Um, so would the, the father say oldest daughter and youngest daughter too, or the mother say that? Is that like, it doesn't matter, yeah. It doesn't matter. No, because oh, this, okay. this, this middle kinship term sandwich in there refers to, because shetch means the oldest sister, right? So if, if I were a female, I'd say, ach shetch, my older sister, ach kik, my younger sisters. But when you say as a parent, ach shetch sik, that's the oldest one. Okay. She's the oldest sister of them all. And then this is the youngest one. She's the youngest sister of them all. Yeah, so even if you're not the oldest kid, if you're the oldest of either sisters or brothers, you're... Yeah, you can still be, I mean, because, and that's important because in Schenget, if we go back to how Schenget lived, like traditionally, the males did not tell the females what to do and the females didn't tell the males what to do. There are certain situations if things were like dangerous or out of control, sure. But like, there was just this order of, and that's what the kinship structure shows us, right? You're the shetch, you tell, you keep them all in line, you tell, teach them how to be, because you've already learned this stuff. This is how, like, families and dynamics and, and cultures just have all of this stuff built in. Like, when I was in Hawaii, um, they were talking about like their kinship structures there, and I said, I got a question for you guys. If if your dad was like really out of control, like maybe drinking too much. Could you say to your dad, hey, dad, you got to get it together? And they said, never. I could never say that to my dad. Oh. Those would be my last words, right? And so, like, kinship tells you a lot about, like, the hierarchy of what's expected. So that's why you have terms like shat and kik, because the kik, that's the youngest one. People have to watch out for that one. People have to, you know, it's just the dynamics are interesting. As the firstborn child, you're taught so much stuff from your parents as you start having more kids, like, can't always have the same level of teaching. So it's like, we taught you, you teach them. And that's a lot of, like, the way that I think Klingit looks at some of this stuff. Okay, one more. Back to our story. Yehuchi yayi awach yit jit chosati. So here again, we have Hoochie is the last. So Hooch is like all gone. And so Hoochie is the last one. Right? Achit, my son, Jeet, to their possession. So you have G, which is possession, and then that T, to be at and arriving there. Chwasati, I gave it to them. Take a coke she what you wrecked the boot. Take a coke she what you wrecked the boot. Just read the thing it. Take a coke she what? Sheesh. And what do you think that is? Like a however? So, is then, kauche what is, they broke it. 
But again, like to say like they broke the boat, that's they wrecked it. So here we get an object. We have a thematic prefix in this one, ka. That's probably the most common one. We have a perfective marker, which in this case turns to a single W. And if anybody's ever wondered, here's the magic formula. If you have a vowel, a perfective marker condensed to a W, then a classifier with a vowel in it, that's when I'll switch to an M, intestine and car cross. So that's a kumplawat. You have to go vowel, W, classifier with a vowel. Then you'll get the M. Then you get the M? Mm -hmm. Wow. Formula. It's a little muddy in terms of just hearing it. Somebody read that one? And what do we recognize in that? Oh, like really or very? Yeah, really. Oh, is that the root that is like when you're wrecking the boat? Yes. And then Which the, part? the kuch. And so when you have at before it, especially like this high tone at, it usually means to just cruise around. But then there's a couple other there's a couple other parts here. So if we took this one and we did our pull apart thing, we'd have na, ha, zero. Kuch, whoops, not a two. Kuch. But what do you think this one is? It's not a J. Is it not? If we pull it apart, it's not a J. It's a C H. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Right on. We all good. Because when, if we add the vowel to it, it'll switch to the voiced form. Ch, ch. J happens like cheech, ach cheech, has to go that route. So in this case, um, this suffix here is taking a verb and turning it into basically a kind of an adjective. Like an, it's it's an it's called the attributive suffix, right? So if you say I always cruise around. I always cruise around. Like this is me, I get in my car and I go for a drive every day, right? I get my boat and I'm just boating all over the place. I boat all the time, just boat around. That's what it's saying. But when you have the one that I boat around in. A yikt at so what he's saying here, that boat that he wrecked, it's like this is still part of the story, like it's going to live forever. <laughs> Son's got to wear that shame, right? It's like he wrecked that boat. That's the one I used to always cruise around in. Right? So he's telling you this stuff. There it is, right? That was my cruising boat. <laughs> so we got the green yicht in a boat or car. We're in a shallow container. And so coming back to like, I think these stories are so wonderful to learn Tlingit from. But remember, like these storytellers use very elevated forms of language. So it's also not the simplest thing. We're not, we're not looking for simple stuff anymore. We're looking at how does this stuff work through the mind of a highly a high fluency, master level speaker and storyteller. But later we'll look at how to 
You know, so like at would be the more simple for, sort of version of that. Maybe the last one, so I better read it. Sheesh. You don't really see this verb like this ever. You would always see it as what? What do you think this should this would normally appear as? Ausaku. Why would I know that? Because <laughs> you're getting it, right? It's like language learning is so interesting because you're like, yeah, I just know that. And I don't know how I know that. It's just that's a pretty common thing, right? I don't know, it's another one of those things like I don't know why he says it this way. You're supposed to not be able to say it this way. But also, he could do what he wants because he's the guy. But I think could it be could it be mistranslated or is it just the audio maybe? You know what I mean? Is it just a little muddy or something like that? Or not? Our yachts are at Kuo, Yerdal Sukha. Our yachts are at Kuo, Yerdal Sukha. Okay, I, I think I know what it is. Okay, so let me show you. Let's look at something here. It's not totally clear to me um, how some of this stuff works. So we're going to go to the limits of of my knowledge, right? But there are certain things like, so this verb, yati, there's a noun form of that. And what, I don't always understand how it works, but to make a noun out of a verb, you usually say, we got to make it appear in a way that doesn't make sense. You would never see it appear this way as a verb. So this one is That's the noun form. So it goes to a zero, goes back to a zero classifier, and it's short and high. Another one, sati, is sati. Another one, kudzati. Everybody know what this one is? Kusti. Kusti. So what we end up with is to be being, to be one of those, being one of those, right? So you could say, for example, um, I'll, okay, let me, let me put some examples over here. I can't remember to copy this. So, say, so you say, chatek yeti. Um, it is, this would usually work better for like ha or whatever, right? But this would be, they are united. They are single. They're being a single thing. So then you would say, that's the noun of being united. You could have over here, we are shingit. But if you say, ha, shingit, I'm going to run out of space here. Ha shingit satiye our shingit identity. Ha kudzati we exist. Ha kustiye our way of life. So asku I think is the noun form of knowing something, which is very weird. So what we have here, my name, his knowing of it, he says this to me. I'll give you the answers for that one. Yechat yosaka would be, they said this thing to me. 
And then what's the thing that he says? I want, I would like to explain to you this name of yours. So that you do have a couple of things. Ach tu wach segu. I want. I in kunach dak kachwanigi. I want to have explained to you this your name. This is the frame, the opening frame for this whole story. Now he's going to move into the story, right? He just he does a whole bunch of stuff just to even get to the story, like. <laughs> My son wrecked my boat. <laughs> Let it live forever in this book. <laughs> but so like so many moving pieces, so many different things. And like if we came back a year from now and looked at the same thing, you would see so many more parts that are there. As you keep learning, keep sort of building the vocabulary in your mind and building these relationships. And once you start to see them in whole language, it all starts to make more sense. Okay. Sheesh. Uh, we'll pick up from here. Focus on your letters. You got one week to write a letter. That's your final for this class. So you're going to write a letter. We're all going to read each other's letters. We'll go on our winter break. Okay. Sheesh, Johan. Goodness, sheesh. Ah. Good night, cheese. 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 Good night, cheese.